Right, I've got a bit of a different video today. Last uh, lesson with my year 11s, we were talking about analysing water as one of their core practicals. And a couple of them were telling me about this pH 9 water that apparently uh, some of them drink and it's meant to be good for you. It sounds a bit like pseudoscience, but I haven't checked the facts of that. That's not really what I'm worried about today. So this is a bottle of that water that one of them very kindly brought in for me. And as you can see, it says on it pH 9. And so what I want to do in this video is actually just test to see whether or not it does what it says on the bottle. So if we have a look at the ingredients, it says Acti pH is ionised water supercharged to pH 9.0 plus, giving it a clean, smooth, alkaline taste. Find your balance and energy to achieve more every day. So that's what they say. It says it's made from purified spring water, a unique blend of electrolytes. It's got some sodium, potassium and magnesium in there. And it's ionised to a high pH of 9.9 plus. I'm not quite sure what the plus means. Uh, we'll see about that. If I look at the actual ingredients, it says spring water, fair enough, uh, magnesium sulfate, sodium bicarbonate and potassium bicarbonate. So essentially the alkaline part of this water will be coming from the bicarbonate ions there. Now, I'm not quite sure what they do to charge it up, but I just want to check the claim of the pH. Now, the most simple and obvious way to do that is by using universal indicator to uh, test the pH. Let's open up the bottle. Nice click of the uh, top of the bottle there. I'll put it into a uh, beaker just in case I decide to try some of this water later on. Put the bottle to one side and I'm just going to take a sample of this Acti pH water just add it to a test tube there we go pop that down for a moment and here's my universal indicator let's add a few drops and as I'm sure most of you know if it's green it's neutral and as it goes towards more alkali color it should go uh, blue to purple so let's have a look so I put a few drops in there and we can see it's still quite a dark green color now I've got a pH chart here so let's see where it matches up with well it's probably not pH I mean it is a little bit darker so perhaps pH uh, 8 has it gone quite to pH 9 it's a bit hard to judge and uh, when we're judging colors it's often quite subjective as well as to uh, what the exact pH is. Now, because universal indicator can be a bit subjective, I thought I'd come up with a different way of analysing it. So I want to actually test the concentration of the hydroxide ions that make it alkaline that are in this solution. So to do that, I am going to neutralise the water using some acid. Now, in order for this to uh, be successful, I've had to calculate the concentration of acid that would, I would need to neutralise uh, the particular concentration um, of the hydroxide ions that give it the alkaline pH. To do that, I've used some nifty calculations here. Now, I'm not going to go through these, but these, are, these do appear in A-level where we use a couple of constants. Um, to rearrange the equation but basically from the pH you can work out the concentration of the hydroxide ions and therefore the concentration of hydrogen ions we need to neutralize it so I've worked out that the concentration of my acid needs to be 10 to the minus 5 moles per dm cubed now that's not a concentration we have readily available in, in the lab so I've had to do some serial dilutions to get to that concentration. So there's already some errors that could have occurred in those serial dilutions. So what I've got here in these two test tubes, these are two samples of my 10 to the minus five moles per dm cubed of hydrochloric acid. And I've got two samples so that I can repeat this experiment twice and calculate the mean. Now to do this, normally we'll do a full titration, but with you today, I'm going to be doing what I call a micro titration. So I'm going to be counting the number of drops of um, the pH 9 water it takes to neutralize this very dilute acid that I've made up in the boiling tubes. I need to check 
when the end point of the reaction is. To do that, I'm going to be using phenylphthalein as my indicator. Here's my phenylphthalein indicator, and this will be colourless when it's in the acid, and it all should go pink as soon as there's a slight overshoot of the uh, alkali that I'll be adding. So let's go with my first, first sample of the dilute acid. So I'll just put a couple of drops in there, just make sure it gets in. There we go. I'm going to just give a little swirl to make sure the indicator mixes around. So you can see it's still colourless in the acid. And I'm going to count how many drops it takes to neutralise this acid. This may take a while. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So you might be starting to see we get a tinge of pink. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. So we need to keep shaking it to make sure it fully reacts. Twenty-five, twenty-six. So I've added about 38 drops so far, and you can see there's a very slight tinge of pink in there. If I hold up to my white lab coat, we can see a slight tinge of pink. So I've now added about 53 drops, and you can see that the, the, the pink colour is uh, much more pronounced. Okay, so I'll make a note of both of those numbers. Because it's such a dilute concentration, it is quite hard to see the colour change. So I'm going to repeat this experiment with the other sample. So I've done that again with my second sample and you can see we've got the first tinge of pink again and that took 34 drops to turn. I've now done the experiment twice, so I can calculate a mean volume that I added. Now, because I was counting the number of drops, I've measured that one drop is approximately 0.05 centimetres cubed. So I can multiply the number of drops by 0.05, and that will give me the volume. So I'll do that now, and then I'll calculate a mean, and then I'll show you how we cal can calculate the concentration um, of the alkali solution. Now it's time to do some calculations. So my mean volume of the acti pH that was added was 1.75 centimetres cubed. Now we can calculate the concentration of the acti pH. To do that, we need to start off by calculating the number of moles of acid that there was in my uh, 5 centimetre cube sample. So I've converted the 5 centimetres cubed into decimetres cubed by dividing by 1,000. I also need to convert the volume of the acti pH into decimetres cubed. So I had 1.75 centimetres cubed as my mean. So I need to divide that by 1,000. So I'll pop that into my calculator. And so that gives me 1.75 times 10 to the minus 3 decimeters cubed. The next step is we can work out the moles of hydrogen ions that were in the 5 centimeters cubed of the acid that I, that I had diluted. So to work out the moles, we do concentration multiplied by volume. Now the concentration, I made that up so that it was 5, uh, sorry, it was uh, 10 to the minus 5. So we will do the concentration, um, so 1 times 10 to the minus 5, multiplied by the volume, which was 5 times 
10 to the minus 3. So I'll pop that in my calculator. 1 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by 5 times 10 to the minus 3. We get a very, very small number, which will be 5 times 10 to the minus 8. I hesitated there because I misread my calculator and I thought I'd calculated the wrong number. I thought it had stayed the same. It was just me misreading the calculator. So ten so 5 times 10 to the minus 8 moles of hydrogen ions. Now in this reaction I'm going to assume that one hydrogen ion is reacting with one hydroxide ion. I'll talk about that assumption a little bit later. So that means because it's a one-to-one -one ratio it means the number of moles of my ACTPH that I added was also 5 times 10 to the minus 8. Once we know the moles of the hydroxide ions, we can then calculate the concentration of the hydroxide ions. So what we do is we do the moles divided by the volume, and the volume we get from the uh, mean volume uh, from adding the number of drops. So it'll be 5 times 10 to the minus 8 divided by 1.75 times 10 to the minus 3. So I'll pop that into my calculator. And that gives us an answer of I'll just put it into standard form. Gives us an answer of 2.86 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so that's the concentration of hydroxide ions, and that is in moles per dm cubed. So the concentration of hydroxide ions in the ACTPH is 2.86 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per dm cubed. Let's have a look at these calculations to see how close the concentration that we got from the experiment is to the uh, quoted concentration of hydroxide ions. So at the start, I had to convert the pH 9 into the concentration of hydroxide ions. And you can see that with this calculation up here. So I calculated that there should be 1 times 10 to the minus 5 um, moles per dm cubed of hydroxide ions. If we look at our final answer, we have got an answer of 2.86 times 10 to the minus 5. Now, the important thing for that result is that it's the same magnitude. So we've got 10 to the minus 5 with both of them. It does suggest, however, that there's actually a higher concentration of hydroxide ions than we might expect in here. However, in this experiment, the main limitation was my dilutions that I made of the acid. I did those just with the measuring cylinder. They were quite rough and ready, and so the acid here uh, was quite dilute. And so I didn't have to add very much um, of the acti pH in order to neutralise it. So that give, might give the impression that it's slightly more concentrated than it actually is. But I'm pretty impressed there that it's within the same, within the same ballpark. Okay, both of them 10 to the minus 5. There we have it. The claim that ACTPH made um, was actually fairly accurate. Um, we calculated a slightly higher concentration of um, hydroxide ions in here uh, than the bottle says, but it's within the same same ballpark. So I think it is fairly accurate what it says on the bottom on, on the bottom on the bottle. So um, the other things just to note. I obviously assumed there, I used the hydroxide ions because that's what makes something alkaline. But in actual fact, as I mentioned earlier, these are bicarbonate ions. And so they may have a slightly uh, 
uh, different effect on the pH. The last thing, thing for me to do is actually try a little bit. Now we're not supposed to drink in the lab but I've wiped down my area so it's nice and sterile. Let's see what it tastes like. Do you know what? It says it's smooth and it's pretty smooth. It's rather pleasant. I'm not sure about the health health benefits of this, um, but I'll have to do some research into that. In terms of the taste, it tastes rather nice. Hope you've enjoyed this little video investigating the ACTI-PH. See you next time.